Edgar works at a small internet club outside Yerevan, turning on the computers each day and making sure customers are connected. On the other side of the city, Anush works at another internet club, handling the phone, typing, processing payments, and helping customers. Nune works at a supermarket, sorting and packaging items for sale. Edward works at a construction supply company, typing and printing all the computer spreadsheets, payments, letters, templates, contracts, and invoices. All of them are active, productive members of the workforce, and all of them are living with a disability. It's a sad stereotype in this society that those people who have disabilities are second-class people. People should treat them with respect and understanding. In Armenia's past, people with disabilities only worked at home or were shunted into social enterprises, separate workplaces performing menial tasks for little money. Some social enterprises still exist and provide a small income for people who otherwise have been shot out of the workforce entirely. But that's changing for a growing number of people with disabilities in Armenia. Under the ILO's project, funded by Finland, from the crisis toward decent and safe jobs, people like Anush, Edgar, Edward and Nune are being successfully integrated into mainstream businesses. For the employers who agreed to participate, hiring a person with a disability was a good decision. Edgar is punctual, intelligent and disciplined. I would say he's quite qualified for this job. Don't be afraid of hiring a person with a disability. In many cases these people can be even more productive than people with no disabilities at all. I'm convinced that people with disabilities are even more diligent, punctual, persistent and responsible than other workers. It is their life's dream to find a job and to be accepted in society. About a dozen enterprises across Armenia are participating in the pilot program. The State Employment Service provided a wage subsidy to employers and a small amount of money toward the purchase of equipment so the new employee could work effectively. Two experts from Sweden, Karin Johansson and Bernd Olofsson, worked extensively with the State Employment Service and with employers, assessing work abilities of job seekers and suggesting reasonable adaptations of the workspaces. Before. Edgar's disability made it too painful for him to sit for any period of time. But a new chair with adjustable armrests and head support recommended by the Swedish experts now means he can work all day without pain. Anush lost her hand in an industrial accident. Her new chair, desk lamp and telephone headset has made a huge difference in her life. I can now work longer without getting tired. The light is really helpful and the telephone headset is simply wonderful. Now I can walk around with the telephone or take calls when my hand is busy. I can see it in the glow in their eyes. I can see that they are happy. I can see that they greet me with a hug when I come to the workplace and then I understand I have made some difference and that is fantastic. Sona Harutunyan is head of the State Employment Service Agency. With the help of the ILO, her office administers the pilot project in close cooperation with local employment offices and employers. The most important result has been the experience and skills we have acquired to implement the projects. Now, nearly 30 employment centers are involved. Under the pilot project, people with disabilities will also get increased social protection. 
their years of work and enterprises will increase the amount of their state-funded pension when they retire. In the past, disability was assessed only by the level of a person's illness, not on their ability to work. The pilot project took the opposite approach. Which applies this approach uh, based not on uh, medical, not only on medical assessments, but on uh, the idea of integration of persons with disabilities, on looking at their workability and what they can do in the labor work market instead of listing the things that they cannot do. The importance of the ILO's support cannot be over-exaggerated. It was oxygen for us. We do not have the resources and would not be able to accomplish what we have without the help of the ILO. The government considers the project so important, it funded it in spite of the ongoing economic crisis. In the year to come, the target is to place 100 people with disabilities in mainstream enterprises across the country. It's a model to show how close cooperation between the state, employers and the ILO can successfully integrate people with disabilities into the labor market. Everyone involved in the pilot program is learning a powerful lesson, that physical disability has no relation to productive employment, self-sufficiency and a feeling of self-worth. In short, Providing decent work for persons with disabilities is possible when people, the state, and experts come together to make it happen. People should look at the content of a person's mind, not their physical ability. Disabled people have more time to devote to learning, to improving their qualifications and for self-improvement. I would like to say to anyone with a disability, be self-confident, be persistent, and don't be afraid, you will succeed.